Should more Asian men strive to be a warrior in the garden versus a gardener in the war? And what does that even mean? It means that too many people are not listening to Musashi, but rather focusing on Chirasi. <laughs> oh, they traded the sushi for the samurai. Anyways, guys, let's talk about this, David, because there was a viral thread on Reddit, and it has to deal with Asian masculinity, by the way. This video is about, essentially, Asian masculinity. And I guess, uh, where, where does it take the conversation? Oh, man, it took it all over the place, all the way from me, uh, you know, Musashi Miyamoto, to Tu Lam, the modern Ronin, to Sun Tzu, the art of war, Tao Tao versus Confucius. I mean, um, long story short, before we get into the ancient esoteric stuff, Andrew, we got to verify, is this true, though? Do Asian guys need to up their warrior mindset level potentially to be more effective in the West? Because... I mean, anecdotally, I would say if there's like non-Asians walking on the sidewalk and they're taking up most of the sidewalk and an Asian guy's like walking in his rightful lane, I would say more oftentimes than not, they're expecting the Asian guy to be submissive and get out of the way. Yeah, I mean, I think the reason why this question was posed is because generally, and we all know this, that a lot of Asian guys, not all, but a lot get tend to get underrated, uh, uh, under-respected, I guess disrespected in America, why did I say under-respected? It's disrespected in America. And I guess, like, a lot of Asian guys are wondering, like, what can I realistically do about this? And what should be the philosophy moving forward if, like, a group of Asian guys could operate as a group and move forward together? Right. And, of course, Andrew, if you are a six-foot-four tatted-up triad they're probably going to move for you on the street, right? But we're just talking about, like, averages and generalities here, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So we're going to tell you what we think about this quote. Do Asian men need to be more like warriors in a garden versus a gardener in the war. Well, please hit that like button. Check out other episodes of the Hot Pop Boys as we get into this. Um, like he opens up by thread, uh, the thread by saying, a harmless man is not necessarily a good man. The blatant harmlessness, which unfortunately disguises itself all too often quite successfully as gentleness, should not be seen as a good virtue. Andrew, not that we say and we agree with everything he says, but what, this is echoing what, Jordan Peterson, Joe Rogan, et cetera, et cetera? Yeah, I think a lot of the guys who do uh, martial arts, a lot of like the Western thinking bro -y types. But I want to say that after doing a lot of research, it's, it's, like, it's not that the East, didn't have this philosophy, by the way, guys. So there's a lot of philosophers and war generals that were very intellectual that essentially are warrior poets, and we're going to get more into that uh, later. A harmless man with no power has no power to do good or evil. He's ineffective, so we should train ourselves to have power, but choose to use it for good and the defense of our own. It's like a nation with a strong military. They shouldn't use it to bully everyone, but they should use it to seek diplomacy and stability. Mm. And then also he goes on to say, and this is of the words of the OP, the original poster, Stop trying to push Asian men into some new soft, gentle masculinity box because you can't just redefine masculinity how you want. These people who say this and do this are not acknowledging human nature. Ooh. Fiery words, man. And his last poetic sentence, Andrew, I got to read it how he said it. He said, someone who believes they are totally incapable of doing harm isn't choosing to be good or evil. They are simply existing. They have little agency and are not capable of good or evil on their own and may be risk of being manipulated and wielded by somebody else to do good or evil. A man who cloaks ineffectiveness and fear as some manifestation of his own virtue is a person who, in his deceit, only harms himself. Contrast that with a man who has power, the potential to be dangerous and knows it, but chooses it to not only not be cruel, but uses his power to combat evil when he sees it. Yeah, so I guess uh, before we get into the comment section, I mean... I would say based off the things that stood out that he said was, uh, I did think it was interesting how he was like, wow, a lot of people try to say that Asian men just represent a new masculinity, that this is, that we're going to redefine masculinity because you can be a soft, gentle, masculine guy. First of all, you can, I do think there's a range of masculinity, but I also don't think you can completely redefine masculinity either. That has a definition, right? And and we should stick by some traditional sense of that that definition. If you want to be a soft, gentle guy, just say that. That's not wrong, but maybe don't try to redefine there, masculinity. There are some sense. good basketball players in the NBA, Andrew, that kind of have a soft reputation, but that soft reputation is accurate. Ray Allen was one of my favorite players right. of all time. He was kind of soft. Yeah, and this guy also used this analogy of Batman versus Superman. Batman is seen to be more courageous because he's an actual man who can die versus Superman, who is essentially an invincible alien 
that can't die. So for Superman to go risk his life, he's not really risking anything. And he has no fear because he probably can't die unless there's kryptonite. But Batman is just a dude. Yeah, so, that's true. That's yeah. a good point, man. Um, Andrew, real quick, some quick thoughts. Why do you think there's so much disagreement on this? I mean, it sounds like pretty solid logic, but I guess it depends because people grow up in such different fishbowls. And nowadays in modern society, even though in my opinion, America for how rich it is is a dangerous country when you compare it to like Japan, uh -huh. right? With, with as a similar economics, you know, per capita or whatever. Very much, way, way more dangerous in Japan. But I'm saying that uh, why it seems like you still have that ability to isolate your fishbowls in America where you seem free from this thinking, right? Yeah, and I was thinking about it this way, you know, so like you can be let's just use an asian person as an example because we're this is addressing asian masculinity essentially so i guess it's like let's say you're an asian guy and you choose to go to the boba shop and oh. spend like four hours there a day let's just say you spend four hours at a boba shop day okay and then let's say you go to like bakery pop-ups and you like all the sweet like little nice cool restaurants which are cool matcha tarts but those venues and those places are all gardens within a concrete jungle. Oh, they might be like a, a butter lettuce garden with little bunnies in yeah, it. Yeah, they might be a little cute little garden, right? But when you step out of that, you're in the real world because like maybe those places aren't dangerous. There's not a lot of aggressive people who go to boba shops. That's not a place where a lot of crimes happen, not a lot of robberies happen, let's be honest. But you still live your life in America. And to me, America is not a garden. I think Tokyo, Shanghai, Hong Kong, these big cities are like, more like garden. Singapore is more of a garden. Right, if you look at this, statistically speaking. Low crime. Yeah. Low craziness. I, I would say America is almost more like Brazil than it is like Tokyo. Okay, that's crazy. Yeah, that's right. a hot take. But I'm just going to say America is definitely more like a forest or a hike. Yeah. It, at, at least. Yeah. Um, Andrew, moving on to our own personal experience. Andrew, our, our, our dad is a scholar, right? Oftentimes, people put scholars and warriors separated, but it wasn't always that way. That's more of a modern archetype. Because yeah. our dad was, uh, at one point, what, 200, 210, 510, almost pure muscle, low body fat. He was like a mini Arnold Schwarzenegger enthusiast bodybuilder in his PhD program. Yeah, no, he was definitely a buff nerd, um, but he was very strong. And I do think like even, I guess, from a uh, son standpoint, seeing a father at least that was physically strong, you know, I mean, I think yeah. that- He every, was the bolo of yeah, his every program. Every immigrant father has their drawbacks and maybe it's the way they communicate or whatever their adaption to Western life. But as, physically, at least, dad was strong. And, and wouldn't he get treated differently than some of our relatives who looked like this? Like, no, it's true. For sure. It's like, true. Especially in Western society where everybody's got the barbarian scanner with the L little listen, uh, Dragon Ball Z power levels dude, and everything. People are judging you on your physical appearance all the time, subconsciously, more than you would want them to. It's true. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. David, you think some Asian cultures might teach the idea of being a warrior better than others? Yeah, I think... In general, Asians have this archetype that they're not really like that compared to Western Hemisphere people. But um, yeah, for sure, there's a variance. If your dad did mandatory military service, certain countries, you know, Taiwan, South Korea, Singapore has mandatory military service. There may be because because of the mandatory military exposure, right? Right, right, right. Um, for me, I think the word warrior, and I think that a lot of people are getting caught up on a physical warrior, like a warrior is only someone who's very strong and very dangerous and knows how to do the, the way of the blade and, you know, can, can knows how to shoot guns and stuff like that. I don't think that's definitely part of it, but that's like on an extreme end. If you're thinking about war, I two think lamb. Like, yeah, two lamb. Perfect example, whatever an Asian Navy seal, what a, a special ops or a red beret, whatever you want to say these guys, right. Or, uh, yeah. Wolf warrior, for example, like always, always funny to point him out, but I think like, you just have to be effective in a time of need. And like being effective can be, mean so many things. It doesn't mean you're going to try to beat everybody up because literally that might be impossible. You can't beat up three thieves, you know, necessarily. But what are you going to do that's effective? How can you affect the situation? How can you help the people in need? How can you help save yourself and the people you care about and your community? And I think that and in itself, it could be, you know, it could be, I, I think about the Boston bombings, right? This uh, Chinese fob exchange student who got his car jacked. He was stuck in the car with the Boston bombers and he was scared for his life because he knows that those people had just killed a bunch of people with bombs. So they had a gun to him. And then when he, 
they were stopped at a gas station. He quickly, within a split second, unbuckled his seatbelt and booked it out of his car, ran across the street to another police station, I mean gas station, and then called for help and then reported his car as the one so they knew what car to look for and then police caught him and they caught the bombers. Right. So you're saying he was still able to heavily impact the situation in a positive way. He was courageous, although he didn't have to hit him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I know about, uh, what you mean. There's the concept of the warrior poet in the East. Andrew, it seems like the Japanese, they leaned into it particularly as far as writing goes. And it seems like, to be honest, Andrew, I got to be honest, it seems like Chinese leaned out of it, even though it still exists in Chinese history. Yeah. For some reason, the Japanese lean into this whole like Ronin samurai thing. I'm not saying there isn't China. There's Cao Cao, who uh, conquered a lot of northern central China. I think specifically to address the Chinese situation, because I guess a lot of people would say Chinese guys need to hear this the most. I don't know, on a ratio basis. I would say there's an overemphasis on Kongzi, who is uh, Confucius. I'm not saying he's not good, but you know, there's Mengzi, Zhuangzi, Cao Cao, and of course, Andrew. You know who else was a great Chinese philosopher? Sun Tzu. The art of war, war general, yeah. But I mean, how come we only just keep our head in the books? Looking like this guy. I well, don't know. I, you know what's funny? I think a lot of Chinese martial artists studied Sun Tzu a lot more than like your average Chinese person. And actually it's funny because a lot of mili American military guys, all war generals in America have read that book. It's a requirement. Yeah. yeah. So American military guys are reading it. Chinese martial artists are reading it. But somewhere in the middle, the average Chinese guy kind of missed the art of war. No, we're just reading mangas. Anyway, um, we're getting into the comments section, Andrew. Somebody said, man, to put it more simply, it's really about being able to just defend your boundaries assertively. And that is just a huge pain point for Asian guys just living a corporate lifestyle. Maybe they're not in the streets or ever exposed to anything street. Yeah, and I think uh, defending your boundaries can mean your physical boundaries, like defending your physical body and being like, yo, man, step back. Hey, man, please don't do that. You know, using your voice and your mind to defend yourself or like in a workplace, right? Like you're kind of getting pushed around or maybe people are asking you to or do extra things. People violating your boundaries yeah. or your work yeah. project. Yeah, or even or your... if you're standing in line, some people see that you're Asian and subconsciously treat you differently and they're a little bit extra aggressive or they expect you to move like... Hey, hey, can you move it, buddy? And then you're just like, hey, man, I don't have to move, you know? Like, And you just stand there and defend yourself. It's not about punching that guy in the face. Uh, it's more about just verbally and in your spirit being confident in yourself. It seems like people really enjoy testing Asian guys' boundaries. Yes, Asian guys will get tested. So you have to be ready yeah. and you have to be trained. It's not about exploding all of a sudden and going super saiyan on the guy who asked you to move right? And was slightly rude to you. That's not what being a, a true warrior poet is about. Right, right, right. It's almost like you're you're keeping a steady pace rather than just like exploding out of nowhere because that's uh, a little bit like uh, not as calibrated, right? Right, right, right. Somebody said, uh, man, how can we learn to do this? When I was growing up in high school, everybody was picking on me because of my race saying I was small and that little, you know, classic Asian guy stereotype. No pee pee. And my dad told me to just ignore them and that just literally was not good advice. Yeah, so yeah, basically yeah. this guy's saying like some Asian dads, obviously not all of them, give the kids bad coaching, even though maybe it's not meant to be bad. It just is like ineffective in the moment, right? Oh, uh, yeah. It's not the worst advice, but it's definitely not great advice. I would say like there's definitely an in-between between just ignore them and focus on your studies. And then there's also on the far extreme, well, just punch them in their face. You know, it's not, there's like an in-between of like, why are you going to defend and stand up for yourself? Knowing that and knowing if you're prepared to is a lot more important. That's why I wouldn't just tell a random kid to go punch that person in the face because I'm like, I don't know if you're trained to deal with what comes next if you punch him in the right, face, right, right? right? So you, it's actually a whole process of training and walking through the different scenarios and being able to like, gather yourself together and staying calm so that you can defend yourself. Yeah, it's very interesting situation because when you're around Asians, everybody is like so non-confrontational and more harmonious. And then mm. when you come to the West, man, it can get so contentious, but it's tough to like morally be against that when you're just trying to rise up the Western ladders and be effective too. Right, right, right. Um, somebody was just saying, you got to learn to speak so softly, but carry a big stick. Um, obviously, Jay-Z out of line, walk softly and carry a big clip. It's all culturally I guess, contextual. What, is that? To what, what would speaking softly and carrying a big stick in like the workplace mean because like i know in the streets 
if you literally have a weapon on you, that's technically a big <laughs> stick. If you got a gun on you, you got a knife, or if you really know how to throw a punch, then it, I guess you have right. a big stick. But I guess is, it would be maybe like looking confident, chest up, being verbally dominant, being really clear with your ideas and really clear what your boundaries are. If somebody's trying to throw some work on one of your team members, but they need to work on your project, being like, hey, stop asking my team member yeah. to, to, to do work for do, your project. Do you, like, do you think some of... Asian guys like lack of training or like lack of ability to do this. Some Asian guys lack of ability to do this. Is it like kind of attributed to like maybe identity crisis? Like if you don't fully know who you are, then you don't necessarily know how to fully portray yourself and act. Yeah. Yeah. I think that it goes back to like what that original uh, author of this Reddit post said so poetically where he was like saying, do not mask your ineffectiveness as like your gentle virtue. You know what right. I mean? Because he's like, is it really? Yeah. He's like, is it really? Be like, like, hey, why didn't you speak up at the meeting? Uh, you know, I'm just a, uh, just just a nice guy. Give other people the floor, you know, because I write a lot of emails. Come on, <laughs> man. Um, Somebody said it is better to be feared than loved from Machiavelli. Yeah, I'm sure this sounds dubious and some pipe people might feel like he's devious or he was tortured. But I think he probably just saw the true raw truth of human nature. Mm. Uh, Machiavelli, Andrew Tupac, a Bronx tale. Sonny said it too. Um, what do you think, man? Is it better to be feared than loved? I'll tell you this. It's certainly more effective because it is true this. I'll tell you this. People do hurt people that they love, but people rarely hurt people that they fear. I, I always thought that that was man, actually it's, true. It's, to it's, well, this is why some Asian guys like, you know, they'll get the full sleeve tattoo. They'll work out, start wearing uh, tank tops, start wear dressing a certain way. You know, if you wear certain things, it kind of gives the symbol that, yeah, you're not to be messed with, you know? You and know, you yes, get, you get the, there are some intimidating guys, Asian you guys out there. The quasi-Yakuza triad package. Yeah, essentially, you look like an Asian gangster. Most people are not going to mess with you, you know? And I think that that's tough to... Um, yeah, I mean, I guess that's, that's why people get those markings. Some right? people said, did it change from the 1970s? And why does it seem like everybody perceives Asian guys in 2023, unless they're like a super thug, you know, that's like big buff and tatted or whatever, to be Harold from Harold and Kumar's character? You mean uh, there is a there's the the comment saying that it seemed like Asian men were much more protective and violent back in the early 70s. Right. I think. Right. You're saying was the Bruce Lee archetype was uh, that true? Yeah, I, I think it was a harder time. I think that. Immigrants were coming back, were coming from a harder situation back then. I do think that it was kind of like, this was before like a lot of the Asian communities really developed. And before they really entered, to be honest, like high positions in corporate America. Yeah, I mean, I, dude, if you, any Asian father who runs like a small business in like not a great area, they're going to have to know how to deal with some stuff. Was this before all the sad boy synth wave pop? It's, yeah. It's going crazy Way before right the now. raves, too. Way before the the split bang haircuts. Hey, way before the vape. Let me just say this, man. I think Keshi and Joji sound good on a late night drive, too. But that just does not remind me of warrior music <laughs> or, or testosterone foot music. I don't know. You tell yeah, me. I mean, you wouldn't listen to it if you're marching. I don't know where you'd march. But Somebody you know. said, uh, you know, it has to do with Nietzsche. Nietzsche was a famous Western philosopher. He's talking about master and slave morality. From the Greeks, Andrew, there was Aristotle. He said, the strong will do what they will. The weak suffer what they must. It's uh, hawks and doves and game theory. What's the morality of a hawk eating a fish? Because obviously a fish is a prey. A hawk is a bird of, uh, is a hunter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Um, somebody said, you got to read Miyamoto Musashi. Mm. And I just said, man, how come everybody's just focused on Chirasis? <laughs> uh, Miyamoto Musashi was a guy who had 66 duels uh, back in feudal Japan. Andrew, he was a samurai, became a ronin. And he, ran, he wrote like a bunch about life. Isn't Miyamoto Musashi also opening up a new omakase in New York City? Yeah. I'm just kidding. Musashi is actually a really famous Chirasi Yo, spot yeah, that just Seattle. sounds like a sushi chef, but you know, I mean, obviously. Somebody but was saying, are you guys oversimplifying it? Uh, I don't know if everybody's going to be like this crazy, like, guy and he, he it could lead people to, to have the swindulum, uh, pendulum swing too far in the other direction what about flavors of strength and standing up for yourself that are frankly more in the middle or more effective yeah so I think the truth is it's like it's not about just learning to be more aggressive uh, uh, you can notice that we didn't focus on the word aggressive today that's not the key to this it's actually like training and more understanding where and how you're going to defend your boundaries and your body and your mind, right? Right. It's, and, and it's understanding why you're doing that, not just exploding and having this rage of aggression. That's 
not necessarily good. That's toxic. That can turn into easily domestic abuse. You can hurt someone yeah. you love. You can hurt someone that you don't love, but on accident, you know what right, I mean? That's like, where the fear of toxic masculinity comes yeah, into play, right? Yeah. Which is why some people try to really encourage soft, gentle masculinity. But it's almost like, you need horsepower in the car. Right. You don't want to redline and like blow the engine but, out and then like explode your charger or whatever Ferrari, but, but, you but know like why, you got to push the car. Yeah, and you know why people explode is like, I don't know if this is exactly how volcanoes work, but it's because they like hold it in, bottle it up, and then the volcano shakes and waits and waits and then something triggers it and then it blows up into this huge eruption versus, you know, the little... Uh, a volcano that's constantly steaming or always spewing out lava. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't know. Like, there's an everyday way to deal with things instead of bottling up and then it turning into rage, which is actually what you don't want. Yeah, I think that that happens when you have a simplistic view of it. And that's why there was all these people in this thread saying, read The Art of War, read Miyamoto Musashi right. and all these. Uh, check out Two yeah. Lambs channel, modern Navy uh, SEAL guy. Anyway, let's just get into our takeaways. Overall, I'm going to go ahead and say this, Andrew. All in all, I guess it depends on what fish bowls, what industries, how you want to shape shift your life. Overall, I think in America, this is just true. What's true? No, the guy's assertion that it's better to be a warrior in a garden than a garden in a gardener in a war. But yeah, like you said, I don't even know if America, outside of a few protected pockets like Irvine, California, is a garden. I don't think America is a garden. I think cities in East Asia like Tokyo, Shanghai, Hong Kong, Singapore, those are gardens. Those are like very like low crime, very little to worry about. Statistically a garden. Less aggression, like just period. But a lot of people, they come from those places and they bring that garden-like attitude to America, which America is definitely, maybe in, in certain parts of the jungle, but also I would say most of America is at least a hike or a forest. Right. It's not a garden. Anyways, I would say, you know, uh, as an Asian guy myself, like how does one become more of a warrior? In my opinion, like I said, like, you know, I do think training martial arts and not just wanting to fight people, but actually wanting to train is a good way. You learn a lot about yourself and you learn how to deal with adrenaline rush and things like that. Also, I do think people do need to like play a sport like basketball or something with a lot of like tense situations that could mm. pop up where you deal with them constantly. You have Teammates to, yelling at each other. Yeah, you have to be able to yell at each other and have this type of communication in the midst of a competition or war, right? So you have to train yourself by doing that type of thing. Um, yeah, and then I would say, you know, those things would make you more confident in life. Yeah, let us know what you think of uh, this general statement in the comment section below and what do you think are some good recommendations if it's true, how people can sort of sink into this thing. I'm actually going to look more into the uh, Miyamoto Musashi stuff. That's yeah. pretty cool. Let us know in the comments down below what you think the easiest way is for a man to become a warrior. Is it to take a knife fighting class? To take a Krav Maga class? A MMA Muay Thai? What, you gotta go to the gun range? Right, the fire a go, Bushido blade on Yeah, a, on or go emulator. become a sushi chef. I don't know what it is. You let me know what you think is the best way. Do you believe that Asian men, in America especially, should try to be more warrior-like? And what does that mean? Let us know. Thank you so much for watching the Hot Pot Boys. Hopefully that conversation was helpful. And until next time, we out. Peace. Peace.